So here we are in Cold Sculptor. You've got a new program open. We're going to start fresh. Remember to add your comment block at the top. And we're going to call this program the Clicker, Clicker Class and Program. You might want to put the date because at some point you can look back on this. You want to remember how long ago you did it or if you're making some modification, that's always a good thing to know. Now this program is going to have two sections. We're going to have the class and we're going to have the program. Remember, they're two separate entities. So we're going to divide up our program with comments, one for the class section and one for the program section. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to start with our class. And you can have more than one class. We're just going to define one right now. But as you get into object-oriented programming, you will be creating more than one class. And then we're going to come down here a little bit and we're going to have our main program section. This is where we will create the instances of our class and we will be invoking the methods. We can also create functions and do all kinds of things in the main program as well. Now let's start with our class. We're going to create a clicker class and we start with the word class and then we give it a name. Remember this is the one time to use a capital letter so I'm going to do clicker. I just keep it single um, not plural. If I want to do more than one clicker, I will just create more than one instance. So I'm going to have class clicker. Now the first thing I need to do in my clicker class is do the constructor. So I need to initialize any attributes or instance variables. If you look from our plan, we know that we're going to have one instance variable or one attribute, and that is a counter. So I'm going to do my constructor which is an init. So init is short for initialize. It's going to look like a function declaration. I start with the word def, but it's not a function, it's a method. And I do my two underscores, and then the word init, and two more underscores. So your constructor always must look like this. If you don't have it named exactly correct, then the computer cannot call the constructor, and your instance won't be correct. Then I'm going to always have my self parameter. The self refers to which instance is invoking the method or which instance is being created. So you can have more than one clicker, and this is saying this for this one particular clicker, whatever I called it, this is its counter. So every instance has its own counter. Now I also must use self in the name of the attribute. So I'm going to have self dot, and then I want to call this my counter. I can also initialize it here. I'm going to set it to be zero. Now this particular class only has one attribute, but I could have list as many as I want to right here. You can only have one constructor, so don't try and do it for every variable. Just have one constructor and you list all your variables, all your attributes right here in this one method. This one just has one, so I've already finished. Now let's take a look at the behaviors we want the object of this class to do. The first behavior is to increment. Well, we already know how to increment. We're just going to do it as a method this time. And we need to give it a name, just as if it was a function. So we're going to call it click. So the person's holding the clicker. Every time that they push the button or they click it, then it wants to increment. So let's call this def click. Now, once again, it's going to have the self parameter. So if I had more than one clicker, I would know which one I will be incrementing. We know to increment, I'm going to use the plus equals one. But what am I incrementing? It's my self dot count counter variable. And you have to type out the entire thing. So self dot counter plus equals one. There's no shortcuts. I can't just say counter. I have to refer to the entire thing. So I just did my constructor and I've done one method. Let's do the second one. Another behavior that we want to happen for this clicker class is to reset. So let's go ahead and call it reset. I'm going to keep the names fairly short and simple because when I invoke them I have to type them out. If I have a really long method name that's just a lot of typing and places for error. I have to have my self parameter for every method. Now what do I want to reset? Well, my counter back to zero. So I'm going to do self.counter equals zero. And you might say well isn't that exactly like the init? Well, yes, it is. That's kind of a coincidence. But what you need to remember is that the init or the constructor is only called once. And you can't 
actually you don't call it. When you make an instance of the class, it automatically gets called and it sets up the initial values. So you as a programmer will never call init. So even though I have the code there, you can't use it. Just the computer uses it when it creates that instance. So if you do actually want to set the counter back to zero, you have to have a method for that. So we had to count, we had to do reset. We've got two methods and we've got our constructor. Let's go ahead and get into our main program and just do a little bit of stuff here, creating an instance and calling some methods just to see what's going to happen and why we might need a couple more methods. The first thing I'm going to do is create an instance of this class. I'm going to call this clicker uh, period 5 because maybe I'm going to count how many people are coming to class today in my fifth period. So period 5 equals and then I'm going to do clicker with a capital just like I did with my finch and my two parentheses. So I just created an instance of the clicker class called period 5. Now I can use period 5 to invoke a method. So the first method I'm going to invoke is click. Let's just say I've got somebody coming in so I do period 5.click. Just like a function call, I'm still going to need my two parentheses. And maybe somebody else comes in, so I'm going to click again, period 5.click. Every time I want to do a click, you know, kind of like the person's pushing it with the thumb, I actually have to invoke the method. So maybe I want to do it five, three times, period 5.click again. So I just did three, I invoked the click method three times. Now I want to print the value of the counter. Do you think I can do it here in the main program? Let's give it a try. So I'm going to do print counter. That is the name of my variable. Will this work? Nope, I'm getting an error. Okay. It can't find counter because remember counter only exists up here. What if I do self.counter? Do you think that will work? Okay. Still doesn't. Okay. You're saying, well, it is right there. Remember from our lecture earlier, the attributes only exist within the class. And the program itself is its own entity. In order for the program to, to get the value, the class has to return it. So I cannot access it directly from the program. It has to be returned to the program, and then I can access it. So I'm going to do a method that will do exactly that. I'm going to call this method getCount. Now it might seem a little weird because what it's going to do is return the count. We're going to talk about that just in just a second. So my whole line of code here is just going to be return self.counter. It's going to take the value of counter and return it to wherever it's getting called. So in order to do this, I need a variable for it. I'm going to call it count equals, and I'm going to invoke the method. So I have period five dot get count. So you see what's happening here. This is going to, it's a return function, so it has to return to something. I've created a variable count for it. Count exists here in my program, and it's going to get the value of the counter. So I called it get count because this is what's going to happen here. The, this method is going to get the value and return it here. So even though it says return here, it is getting in the main program, the value. Now, I'm not going to print self.counter, but I'm going to print count. And it works. I've got three. If I did a reset, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to invoke another method, period 5.reset. And then let's get count again. Period 5.get count. And let's print it again. Let's see what happens this time. So first it was 3, and then I reset. I had to get the value of count all over again, and then it was 0. So I know that all my methods are working correctly. Now if I want to do a lot in my main program, this is going to get pretty clunky if I just keep going everything in my main program section. So we're going to create functions in here. And um, Let's go ahead and create a main function. And in my main function, I want to create my instance. It's just going to do this. I'm going to have another function that's going to do some of the work. I'm just going to call it first. It's going to be a tester, basically. And I'm going to take some of the code here. 
and I'm just going to put it here in my in my little function. I have to do my indenting. So this is more what we've been doing all along is dividing up our code into functions. So I've taken all that code that was just in main, you know, like actually not even in main, just in the program itself, and now I can call main and it should do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to main is going to do an instance of the class and then I'm going to call first and it's a function so I just do a regular function call and it should work exactly the same. Okay, so I've got an error because period 5 is not defined. Now that I have this instance, first needs my uh, my um, instance just so kind of like we did with the finch. I'm going to put period 5 there as my parameter and period 5 here as my argument and now we get everything to work fine. Okay now one thing I could do is also I could do a print function. So if I want to get the value and print this let's go ahead and put this in a function because otherwise see how I'm doing it twice so every time I want to print I've got a repeat two steps of code so if I'm doing that I have a lot of repetition I might as well just make it a function so let's call this print results and I'm going to need my theory 5 instance and I'm going to take this code and copy it and cut it and put it right here Now I can take it out from here, and then wherever I want to print, I will just call print results. So I want to call this this function a couple of times right where I took off the code. So I'm going to call it right here. I'm going to put print results with period 5. And I'm going to call it here after my reset. Print results with period 5 as my argument. So it should work exactly the same. Let's give it a try. And I've got a spelling mistake, I believe. Results instead of result. So let me spell it correctly. And then I spelled period 5 wrong. So I'm going to fix that. So now I've got 3 and 0. Everything's working great. Do you think I can create a method for this instead of a function. So could I enclose it in my class and just have it ready for the user to program with instead of having to make them actually create a function for it. Let's give it a try. So this is going to be our fourth behavior. I'm going to call it something a little different just so I can compare it. So I'm going to call this one print count and I still need my self parameter. I'm going to have basically the same code. I don't have to get the value anymore because it's already included here. The class knows what the value of counter is. It has access to counter, so I can simply print it. So I'm going to do print self.counter. So let's just try calling it, invoking it in one place just to see if it works. So I have period 5 dot and I'm going to do print count. So here I'm going to still call the function. Here I'm going to call invoke the method and let's see what happens. And just to make sure, there we go, everything's exactly the same. I can take it off here, I'm going to take off my function call and I'm going to invoke the method again, period 5 dot print count. And sure enough works fine, therefore I do not need a function for this. I declared a method in my class, I can just invoke it that will make it easier for the programmer. As long as the documentation tells the programmer that there is already a method for this, there's no reason to create a separate function. Now one thing I might want to add to it is some description because it's just printing a number. I don't really know what that number means. So I'm going to come in here to my method. I'm going to add in um, a string that says count. So it'll say, it'll tell me that I'm printing the value of the count. So now it'll look like this. So it's a little more user friendly. Everything's working really good. I've got my instance of my class. I called my first function. I passed in the instance as an argument. And here's the parameter. 
and inside this function I just invoked all these different methods. All the methods are here encapsulated in my class and it's just working great. Can you think of some other methods that you might be able to create for this clicker class? Maybe you want to do an unclick if I've clicked a person by accident or they left the, con the class you know, because they went home so I could unclick them. Maybe I want to do a double click. Two people came in at the same time so instead of two quick clicks I could just do a double click. So think about how you could implement those two methods in your clicker class. Pause the video and give it a try on your own. Okay, let's take a look at your code. Were you able to do an unclick and maybe yours looks something like this? And were you able to do a double? Maybe yours looks something like this. And then did you make some calls? So I haven't called mine yet. Let's just try doing one in here. Maybe I'm going to do an unclick. Let's do another unclick and print. And maybe I want to do, uh, now if I'm doing this after reset, I'm going to be getting some zeros in there. So I'm going to take this one out and let's try doing um, a double and see what we get. Now I have a spelling mistake, so you have to be kind of careful about that. And there we go. So I clicked some, I unclicked some, I did a double, and somehow I ended up with the same numbers. So that's pretty cool. Now one thing you can do in your methods is you can have a method call another method. So we're going to do a multi, where maybe I know that 10 people are coming, and so instead of clicking 10 times, I can just say there's 10 of you, and I can do a multi-click. So let's call this um, this method def multi spelling click, and I'm going to need myself parameter, and I'm also going to need a number passed into it. How many am I clicking? I'm just going to use num as a parameter. So methods can have parameters from there when they get invoked, and that's going to come from the program itself. I always need self. And I can't have more parameters if I need them. I'm, because I'm going to use a for loop and I'm going to call click for every time that I need to. So I'm going to have just a typical for loop for x in range up to num. That's how many clicks I need for this multi click. And I'm going to call self.click. Now I do not need to include the self parameter here because I'm already inside the same instance. I do need the self.click uh, for the method call, but that's all I need. And then when I invoke this method, I will say how many clicks. Let's come down in here to our uh, first, our tally here. And let's invoke this method. So I'm going to have period 5 dot multi click. Oops, spelling. Now I need to tell it how many clicks. So let's do it for five people. So I'm going to pass in five as an argument. It's going to come up here to my number. And so it'll do this loop five times. It'll do five clicks. Okay, now nothing happened because I need to print it again. So let's go ahead and do period 5 dot print count. And now I should get five more. And there we go. So this is working great. Now another thing I can do is create more than one instance of the clicker class. So right now I just have period 5, but I also have period 8 that I might want to keep track of. So let's do another instance. I'm going to call it period 8. And I'm going to do it from the clicker again. So I have two instances. So it's going to be pretty important that I say which one am I clicking or unclicking. Well, let's do another one. We just did first. Let's do another function for period 8. So I'm going to call this second. I'm going to pass in period 8. And then I can just pick um, any of the methods that I want to invoke here. And I'm just going to let you kind of pick your own. So I'm going to do period 8 click. And maybe I want to do a multi-click to get a whole bunch of them. Let's do 10. Maybe I want to do um, an unclick because only nine people showed up after all. And let's print the results.
Now nothing's going to happen unless I call um, the second function. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to call second. I'm going to pass in as my parameter period 8 instance and let's see what happens. Now I can't really tell what's going on so I might want to do some dividing up here. I'm going to print um, period 5 and I'm going to call that one and then I'm going to do a print statement and then let's print period Eight, and let's see what's going on here. So now things look a little bit easier. I can tell what's going on. Everything's working great. Now one last thing to try is kind of combining them. So I'm going to do a third function. And I'm going to have both period 5 and period 8. So let's pass in both instances. And then you just can kind of decide um, when you want to invoke what for each class. So I can do a period 5 click and I can do a period 8 click. And they're each going to be pulling from their own set of methods and objects to keep everything straight. And then maybe let's do a period 5 multi click with 5 people. And let's do a period 8 multi click with 10 people and then I want to print out both results so I'm going to do a period 5 dot print count and a period 8 dot print count okay. so I can mix up my instances sometimes period 5 sometimes period 8 and I just, that's why having this in, in front is important. And this is what becomes self. So it knows which one that it's doing it. Is it period 5? Is it period 8? That value gets passed into self. So the right thing gets in incremented. Now let's do a print statement. And let's do both combined. And call this function third. And I have to pass in both of my instances, so period 5 and period 8. And let's see what happens. I got different numbers because each one has their own count. Now there's one more thing we can do since they're both counting, and I don't really know which one is which. I could add a parameter into my print count so I know which one is getting printed. So let's just put in um, another parameter count and let's just say who. So here in my print statement count and then I can I'm going to put in front who I'm counting from. So I'm going to say who and then count and then the self counter. Now when I call the count now it's going to expect a parameter. So for period 5, I can just say period 5. And for period 8, or not. So I don't think I did period 8 here, but let's go ahead and do that. Oh, that's the wrong one. Now whenever I'm putting this back to 5, whenever I'm calling this, I'm going to need to go through and modify my code. And then in here, I'm doing period 8. Here, period five, and here, period eight. Hopefully, I got them all. Okay, let's give it a try again. Oh, I missed one. All right, let's give it a try again. And there we go. So now I could include another parameter in that method where I could pass in which instance I am printing and it can make it even more user friendly. Now if you have some time I encourage you to try some more methods on your own. Uh, maybe you want to put in something that doesn't let it unclick if it would go past zero. So can I have negative number of people? Probably not. So I could put in some kind of an if statement where if they're trying to unclick and it's at zero it just stays at zero. Okay, Same thing with 
you know, maybe, you know, a multi unclick, that kind of thing. So think if you can add one or two more methods to your class, test them by invoking them, and you'll be ready to turn this program in. So let's just see how inventive you can get with a simple class like the clicker.